hey buddies if this is your first time here you're welcome i appreciate you dropping by and if you're a returning subscriber you already know i love you so much you are the mvp trust me i appreciate the love you guys have been showing me on this channel and if this is your first time please consider subscribing and joining the family so that you move from vip to mvp of this channel right isn't that cool all right without further ado let's get right into the video but before then i would love to ask you guys to please like this video as it helps the youtube algorithm to push out my video to people that might need this type of content this video i'm going to be giving you guys the reasons why student visa often get denied and also things that you can do to avoid being you know rejected or denied when you put in your canadian study visa For that reason this video is going to be sectioned into two okay what you should not do and then what you should do what you should not do in the sense why people get rejected and what you should do to avoid being rejected all right and hopefully you learn something from this video and you are watchful of these things that i'm going to mention when you are putting in your own visa application so let's get into the first so the first reason why people often get de denied of their um Canada study visa would be proof of funds. Like I mentioned in my proof of funds video, if you haven't seen that video, please see it. I feel like if I do say so myself, that video is the best proof of funds video you can find on the street of this YouTube. I said that. <laughs> okay, I'm just saying, just see that video because it's going to give you a breakdown information of what you should do with your proof of funds and what not to do this video is just going to partly touch it but that video has a very detailed information about proof of funds all right so proof of funds for most nigerians and africans happens to be one of the major reasons why people get denied because sometimes we don't have enough funds to move here i really want to move here and once the visa officer feels like you don't have enough money to be here they are going to deny you your visa on that ground okay it's pretty much a very understanding ground on which one can deny someone visa right so you want to make sure that you have enough funds to prove that you can study in canada so make sure you see that proof of funds video because it has all the information that you might need but then i'm just going to also say it for the purpose of this video you need the total sum of your tuition fee for a year and then additional ten thousand canadian dollars okay for you to have enough funds to prove that you can actually sponsor and support yourself in canada and if you intend to come with dependents or your family your loved ones your husband your 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 kids always know that you have to make provision for additional four thousand canadian dollars in the same in your account you have whatever means you're using to prove funds you have to make available additional four thousand canadian dollars for each person that is going to be accompanying you to canada i hope you understand what i mean by this and also know that different visa routes might require different proof of funds for myself i use the nsc visa route it is the nigerian express visa route okay so for that visa route you need you need thirty thousand canadian dollars and additional ten thousand canadian dollars which is going to be a total of forty thousand canadian dollars to prove funds for your visa application so don't if you are taking the nsc visa route don't use the same amount that you would use if you are taking the normal visa route i hope this is well explained if you need more information about the nse visa route please see my video on how i got my canadian visa approved in 10 days i'm going to have it linked in the description box for easy access to you guys the second reason why students get denied visa to come to canada would be home ties family ties okay i think i've mentioned this in a couple of my videos family ties to home country if you're not able to convince the visa officer that you have ties that will bring you back to nigeria or ghana or any other country you are moving from the immigration officer does not want to hear that oh i want to stay back in canada when i'm done with my program and work no they know eventually that most people stay yes we know that is an established fact but they want you to tell them that you're going to go home okay that that degree you're coming to acquire that that masters that knowledge you're coming to canada to acquire that you're going to take it back home to you know do this do that and all of that so you are going to have to 
convince the visa officer that you are not staying back in there. And to do that, you need to explain and you need to convince the visa officer that you have a lot of things tying you back to your home country. For instance, let's say you are coming here as a lady and you're married and your husband is still back home. You can use your husband as a family tie. You can say, oh, I have my 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 spouse back home i have my parents back home i have my siblings you can also use properties investments stock anything landed properties to tie yourself back home you can use businesses you can use your job okay if you have a job you're doing in nigeria you can say oh i'm coming back to continue my job in this company i just want to acquire knowledge that will help me in this career do you understand they don't want to ever feel like you want to come and stay so this is one of the reasons why people get denied you have to lay a lot of emphasis that you want to go back to your home country it is very important after proof of fund this is the second reason why most people get denied so you have to lay a lot of emphasis that you want to go back to your home country after you are done with your program here in canada the third reason why people also get denied study visa is family ties in canada so let's assume you have your brother your sister or even your parents let's assume in canada and you want to come and study here the visa officer would just assume that you want to come and join your family and you have no intentions of going back remember we already talked about the emphasis that they lay in you going back to your home country when you're done with your program so assuming your family is here the visa officer literally just feels like oh once you come here you're going to stay with your family so it's now your duty to convince the visa officer no even if my family is here even if my brother is here or my sister is here i still have my own dreams i still have my own goals and which is to go back to my whole country and do this of course i still have some of my siblings or some people in nigeria that i want to go back to you have your business in nigeria just be able to convince them that you're not going to stay just because your brother is schooling here or your sister is here just be able to convince them that you will go back to nigeria or wherever you're coming from after your program the first reason why the immigration officer will reject your study visa is lack of travel history. Okay, and bear in mind that this does not mean that you must have traveled to be in Canada. No, right? I haven't been to anywhere in my life. I haven't traveled out of Nigeria before. This would be my first time traveling out. And I still got my visa approved even in such a short time. All right, so it doesn't mean that you have traveled, you would have traveled out of Nigeria or any country where you're coming from. But what this means is that the visa officer wants to know your travel history if you have been able to uh, abide by travel rules and all of that. If you had exceeded your stay in the country that you have traveled to, okay, let's assume you've traveled to um, France or Dubai and then you, you, you didn't live when you're supposed to live or when your visa has expired bear in mind that some of these western countries they have a system that is connected okay and if you have done that if you had overstayed your welcome in a particular country and you lie that you've not they are going to see it they are going to find out so if you have done that it is not totally a bad thing what you need to do is just to explain to the visa officer oh i once overstayed my my welcome in dubai or in france for so so reasons and blah 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 if the visa officer finds your reasons convincing enough they will still give you your visa okay and also if you have a good travel history which means you've never overstayed your visit that is even a perfect situation you just tell the visa officer use it and convince the visa officer that you've been to these countries and you left at the time you were supposed to so it just goes on to like convince the officer that this person after studying in canada would also return back to their home country since they've been able to stay in these countries and return when their visa was due the sixth reason why people also get denied their study visa is submitting fake documents or documents that do not like that are not authentic or original okay these people are human beings and they are smart people they are very smart people okay for you to be a visa consultant or a visa officer you've actually passed through some stages so they know fake when they see fake so please don't try and trick them because they're going to be tricking yourself and if you submit some um false documents you might actually never be able to move to that country anymore so you have to be very careful to make sure that every document you're submitting is authentic don't fake anything at all when it comes to your visa application 
The next reason why people often get their study visa denied would be criminal record or background, or also violation of any kind of law or human rights in your home country, okay? Because even when you go ahead to apply for your visa, you are supposed to do a criminal check. So just make sure that you don't have any criminal dents, you know? Another reason why some students that have applied for their visa to come study in Canada get denied would be unexplained academic gap. I've talked about this in a couple of my videos, okay? You cannot be a, let's say you, you studied public administration in your home country and you're coming to Canada to do um, public health. And bear in mind, of course, you might have passed through the check of the admission, but sometimes the immigration also, I mean, the school, they know that if they deny you visa, meaning that they still did not see you fit to be in Canada. So you don't want to like, once they see and they feel like this is not making sense, they might actually deny you your visa on that, you know, note. And also, if you are advanced or let's say you've been you've, you've graduated over 10 years and you're not able to convince the visa officer what you've been doing with those years that you've left school or what have you been doing for the past 10 years that you study, uh, you graduated so you need to really explain that and another side to this is also maybe when you already have let's say you already have a master's degree in nigeria and you want to come to canada to do another first degree and you're already like 40 years the visa officer is going to be like you want to downplay your qualification just because you want to move and bear in mind that they know that nigeria is hard and most people want to come to canada let's be honest so they know all these things so you don't want to now put it on their face that oh this is actually what you're coming for okay so if you have study gap explain it and if you are moving from a, a different program to a different one or like from a different faculty or field to another one explain the reason and you can use your work let's assume that you're public administration but you've been working in the health sector for the past 10 years is there enough experience for you to say oh uh, during the period that I did this work I kind of developed interest for this thing and this is now what the career that I want to pursue that way the visa officer will be like oh nice this person actually just you know found their path and of course they will be glad that you did and probably issue you your visa so please just take note of this unexplained academic gap because your visa can be rejected on these notes. So we've come to the end of the first section of this video. So we are heading to the second section, which is what to do. What should you do so that your visa is not rejected, okay? So that you're not denied your visa. At this point, I might just be reading through. The first thing I would say that you should do is to make sure that the school is a DLI institution, all right? I will leave a link in the description box where you can find the list of DLI schools in Canada. DLI just simply means Designated Learning Institution. So make sure the school is a DLI school. It is very, very important, okay? The first thing you should do is to choose your program wisely and carefully, okay? Just like I said, you don't want to jump from a particular faculty. Maybe you're moving from humanities to um, sciences. You need to actually explain why. So please just be careful with that. If you have to pick a particular program that is different from what you've been doing or your professional life and your academic life, always provide a detailed explanation to the e visa officer why you have done that. The third thing you should do is to provide enough funds. I already explained it and the amount you need in the first section of this video. Please make sure you have enough. It is better to have more than, than to have less. So if you have more money, please have it. It's better for your application. And it kind of convinces the visa officer that, oh, true, this person can actually afford it. And do not dump any sum of money in your account. Still refer to my proof of fund video as it will give you more light to what I am talking about. The first thing you should do is to have have a strong SOP. I have a very detailed SOP video on this channel. You might also want to check it out. SOP statement, statement of purpose or personal statement. Okay, so make sure you have a strong personal statement because the like Canadian system, Canadian immigration system do, do not have like a physical interview or one-on-one -on -one interview. Everything you are doing is online. So that is where you sell yourself. If you sell yourself cheap, you stand the chance of getting denied. But if you sell yourself really high, you stand the chance of getting your visa approved. So please emphasize on a very good SOP. The fifth thing that you might need to consider is also having a good English test score, okay? If you are coming to Canada via the NSC route, you already know that you need 
it is mandatory you must write IELTS for that particular route okay and normally you you just need like a band a C, band six you know score for you to qualify for the NSE route but of course if you score higher the better okay don't take the test just like a play I'll probably make a video on how I studied for my um, IELTS exam submit only real and authentic documents for your visa application emphasis on that please so just pray about your application really okay and i wish you all the best in your journey and i really look forward to you know the people that will join me in saskatchewan to meeting you the people that will still be in other provinces just to get a message from you and saying mara i'm here and all of that and thank you guys for watching you guys have been showing me so much love in this channel in fact it has motivated me to keep putting out videos because now i see that more people actually need information like this so i'm going to keep putting out more videos and i hope that you keep supporting me by sharing my videos liking my videos share my videos to your friends your families anybody that you know that is about to move to canada or wants to move to canada and is looking for information and resources i would really appreciate if you do that okay and with that being said i'm going to get out of your face right now and i'll see you guys in my next video mara signing out